until I lay my head. Yes. Oh, I will believe for the goodness of God. Yes, thank you, Lord. All your life you have been faithful. Yes, thank you, Father. And all my life, all my life you have been so, so good. Yes. With every breath that I am able. Yes. Oh, I receive of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. I receive yes. of the goodness yes. of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. God is in the building, everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. I don't know if I'm straightened out yet. The camera person is coming. <laughs> but we give God glory for everything that he is doing at this particular moment. We thank him for every great thing that yes. he has yes. blessed us yes. to do. Yes. So we bless him, we thank him, and we magnify him. And today, everybody, we have such a wonderful wonderful lesson we pray for each and every person that is uh, here present in the house of God and also for those that are coming to join on Facebook live we're going to do something we've done this before a few times but we're going to start off with something great everyone please repeat after me it's called they're called affirmations or inspiring words of God or a declaration from the Lord. First part, I want everybody to repeat after me. I am loved by Jesus. I am loved by Jesus. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. From all my iniquities. From all my iniquities. As Mother Sarah teaches us. As Mother Sarah teaches us. I will be paying attention. I'll be paying attention. I'll be taking my notes. I'll be taking my notes. And I'll be focused. And I'll be focused. To see what the Spirit of the Lord. To see what the Spirit of the Lord. Has to say to me. Has to say to me. On today. On today. I am a child of the Most High God. I am a child of the Most High God. I am a friend of Jesus. I am a friend of Jesus. And I am a servant of the Lord. And I am a servant of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I declare this over my life. I declare this over my life. Amen. 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 We give God glory for declarations. Because declarations, and when we say them, after a while we keep saying them, we're going to start believing them. Even for the, some of us, uh, one thing that, the first thing that all of you must understand, <coughs> Jesus Christ already died for your iniquities. <coughs> Jesus Christ has already died for every single trial and tribulation that you yeah. even think that you might be going through. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid the price already. So you are already forgiven. That's why we started with that. Because many people, they really don't know. They think that because they go, you know, I don't I don't even want to call it a sin anymore. I like to call it fault finding. Because we commit faults. But the word says that Jesus Christ has already died for our iniquities. He was bruised for all of our transgressions. Yes. He was bruised for us. So every slash he took, every time you see them bleed, whether you see them on the on the movie or whether you read the scriptures, we know that Jesus Christ has already bled on Calvary's cross. Yes, and we know that when he said it is finished it is at the finished. cross, that means he died for your sins, for yours. Yours, yours, your children, your grandchildren, and everybody else that's coming up after you. This is why it's so important to teach your children the fear of God. Because when you learn how to have the fear of the Lord, 
over every situation that you encounter, you won't be so quick to feel sorry for yourself and say, oh, I can't come to the house of God because this lesson right here, this is too much for me. I won't be able to handle it. Mm. And so today, we're going into our very wonderful lesson. Praise God for this beautiful lesson because we're going to learn today about the dangers of sexual sins. Mm. What are the dangers of sexual immorality? Mm. The dangers also, now we're going to teach it because we know that at church, people are committing all kinds of faults. Yes, yes, yes. They're committing all kinds of shenanigans, and they're too afraid to talk about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Bible teaches us, oh man, the Bible teaches us from the beginning of time the importance of not getting involved with sexual immorality. And so with that being said, we're going right to our first point here. And the first point is, make sure that you talk to the leader about any sexual encounters going on at the church or going on at your home, going on for your neighbors. If you, all right, here we go. Nine times out of 10, if it feels bad right here, it's bad. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't make you feel good, it's not of God. Yeah. Anything that's not of God will make you feel really bad. Yes, yes, yes. And if it's bad for you, and it's bad to you, if it does you bad, then you know that that badness will be contagious and you'll bring it right to the church. Yes, yes. We know yes. that in the spiritual realm, the enemy is lurking. He's looking to who he may devour. Yes. And so, because we know that, we must learn to have enough boldness, enough courage to come and talk to the leader. Talk to your prophetess, spiritual mother, your pastor, your leader about anything yes, yes. because your leaders are the ones that are going to take it. Now watch. A good leader takes it straight to God in prayer. Yes. A good leader even will fast and pray about the situation yes. so that they can make sure that they receive the wisdom that only comes from God. Yes, yes. All right? So we're going to go right to our first scripture and pastor is going to read for us. Let us go to the Message Bible, MSG Bible. And for those of you all that have your Bible, that's wonderful too. I love it. I love to hear the pages flip. We're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, I want to lay something about the Corinthians. Oh, Jesus. Corinthians. They had a lot of sexual things going on. And if you notice, if you take a few some time to go read to the Ephesians, Philippians, these were all people that Paul traveled to these towns around Asia to go and go talk to all these people because these people didn't know about Jesus. And so 1 Corinthians, we're going to start at the top, and we're going to go from verse 1 in the message all the way to verse 8, okay? So we know that in the message, it kind of speaks to us with uh, paragraphs. That's why it's called message, because it actually gives us a message. So 1 Corinthians, we're going to 1 Corinthians, everybody. We're going to chapter 5 one more time. In the message Bible. And it's called the mystery of sex. You know. I wonder something. Why are people at church so scared to talk about sex? The enemy has kept people bound. With talking about sex too much. Mm -hmm. So let's go get started. I also received. A report of scandalous sex 
within your church family. Mm -hmm. A kind that wouldn't be tolerated mm -hmm. even outside the church. Yes. One of your men is sleeping with his stepmother. Yes. And you're so above it all that it doesn't even phase you. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't this break your hearts? Mm -hmm. Should it bring you to your knees in tears? Yes. Shouldn't this person and his conduct be confronted, dealt with? Keep going. Moving on down. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I would do. Even though I'm not there, in person, mm -hmm. consider me right there with you. Yes. Because I can fully see what's going on. I'm telling you that this is wrong. Yes. You must not simply look the other way and hope it goes away on its own. Yes. Bring it out <coughs> in the open. Yes. And deal with it. Deal with it. In the authority of Jesus, our Master. Yes. Assemble the community. Yes. I'll be present in spirit with you and our Master, Jesus, will be present in power. In power. Hold this man's conduct up to public scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Let him defend it if he can. But if he can't, then out with him. Out with him. It will be totally devastating to him, of course, and embarrassing to you. But better devastation and embarrassment than damnation. Yes. You want him on his feet and forgiven before the master on the day of judgment. Uh -huh. <coughs> Keep going. Your flip mm -hmm. callous. Callous. Your, your flip callous. Arrogance in these things bothers me. Mm -hmm. You pass it off as a small thing. Small thing. But it's anything but that. Yes. Yeast, too, is a small thing. A small thing. But it works its way through a whole batch of bread. Dough pretty fast. Yes. So get rid of this yeast. Get rid of this yeast. Our true identity is flat and plain. Yes. Not puffed up with the wrong kind of ingredients. Yes. The Messiah, our Passover lamb, has already been sacrificed for the Passover meal. Yes. And we are the unraised bread, part of the feast. So let let so let's live out our part in the feast, not as raised bread, swollen with the yeast of evil. evil. Yes. But as flat bread, simple, genuine, and unprinted. Pre -pre unpretentious. 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 All right. Let me give it to you in some simple words. You're not allowed to be shenanigazing with people at church so you can invite them to your house and y'all can have some dirty little secrets. Ooh. You're not allowed to be sleeping around with somebody that is married at church because Paul said that he received a scandalous report. 
Yes. And y'all know what that report was? Mm -hmm. That it was a man at the church sleeping with his mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Now hold up. Hold up. Stop the press right there. <laughs> I'm a married man. And I got a woman. But I'm looking from her and I now put my eyes and my focus on her mother. Nah, nah, nah. Ooh, and I say, oh, she sure is pretty. Hey, mother, girl, your skin is so soft. But I'm a married man over here with your daughter. Mm -hmm. But you sure is a pretty chocolate mama. Ooh, hey, mama, you're so pretty, girl. Be careful about Letting yourself get a little bit too flattered. Mm -hmm. We have to be, and we even have to be careful about others also flattering us to the point to where our heads gets a little bit puffed up mm -hmm. like that yeast. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you guys why Paul described it as the yeast. For those of you all that like to bake and like to make homemade breads, mm -hmm. And different things, nice doughs to put on your peach cobblers and things. Mm -hmm. All this good, goody, goody stuff. Yeast makes bread rise. Yes. But I'm going to tell you all what yeast does to the body. It swells the body up. That's why all of the bread that you all love, that some of you all love to eat, it has caused a lot of problems in your inside of your body. Mm. So whenever Paul was describing this yeast, mm -hmm. he was talking about the evil intentions that are already sitting in your heart. So you have to be careful about any kind of sexual activities that you know don't really come from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been learning in our classes we got Zoom every single day, y'all. Y'all better come to the Zoom classes. Okay. These Zoom classes at 8 o'clock in the morning have been teaching us a lot about our bodies. Mm -hmm. The different sexually transmitted diseases. The different mm -hmm. things that are caused by a woman. A woman can get yeast infections and all kinds of infections. Because ladies, we got something called an open wound. Mm -hmm. Our stuff is just kaplat, sitting right on out. Okay? Husbands. So, let me turn around and say this. <laughs> Husbands, I love you, but you can't play with your wife's pretty little pie with your fingers. It causes all types of infections, yeah. such as yeast infections and all kinds of urinary tract infections. And then it will cause long-term bad infections like cancer down there. Okay? Give you guys some knowledge about some of the things of why the Apostle Paul said you should not deal with this lightly. Yes. Though yeast is something small, it makes the bread go big. Yes. That's how he was describing sexual sin at the church. Because mm -hmm. this guy began to get mad at his woman. And he would go from looking at her to now focusing on his beautiful mother, on her beautiful mother. Mm -hmm. All right, they got this song. It's not a good song. It's a secular song. Yes, it is. But I think about it when they when he says, "Where did she get her pretty body from?" But she gets it from her mama. Mm -hmm. So there's many things that us women get from our mother. Look like the older I get, the softer my skin is, like my mother. The more beautiful my tone looks, like my mother. And if you guys would have seen my mother at the age of 50, you guys are looking at all this pretty hair. Though her hair is different now, when she was my age, she was gorgeous to look at. Mama is 77 years old, and every friend, every person that crosses my path says, Whoa, Mama is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. They talk about your parents, your mother actually, as being so gorgeous. Yes. 
They talk about your mom when she's up in age and saying, no, you not 75. No, you not. What does 75 really look like? Because age is only a number. But it's the way that you carry yourself. Are you honoring yourself so that you will not be labeled or categorized as a how are you carrying yourselves in the eyes of God is very important yes. because that mother she was weak yes. to fall into to the temptation for this man in the church Marie Sassy Marie he came up to the woman and whatever he said to that mama he was able to get her long enough to put her right in the bed with him. Mm. That's exactly what was going on at that church. Mm. The mother was sleeping with a man at church that was already married to a woman. Mm -hmm. He was sleeping around with his mother-in-law. Mm. So this is why you got to bring these kind of things up to the leader. Yeah. Nobody else is going to be able to handle this. And you cannot keep quiet. For weeks at a time and think that you can handle it. Yes. You cannot handle these things. This is nothing to play with. And this is nothing for you to say. But mama, I got this. I'm grown. No, you're not grown to deal with this kind of thing. Yes. And this is why it's very important to have God-fearing people praying for all of us. Yes. All the time. Yes. This is why the Bible says pray and don't stop. Because you're not just praying for yourself, but you're praying for some of the others that may not have the strength that you have. Mm -hmm. They too might be weak. Okay? Yes, yes. So let's go right to the next scripture. First Corinthians. All right. Fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. Eleven verse. All right. We're going to stay right there in First Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going right on down to the 11th verse. But this time we're going to switch it to the GW. God's word. GW. 1 Corinthians. Stay in the same chapter 5. And we're going down to verse number 11. Let me know when you all get there. By saying a whoop whoop. Yum whoop, yum. Whoop. All right. Yum yum. Now what I meant was that you should not associate with people who call themselves brothers or sisters in the Christian faith, but live in sexual sin. Our greed, worship false gods, mm -hmm. use abusive language, yes. get drunk. Or dishonest. Or are dishonest. Or are dishonest. Mm -hmm. Don't eat with such people. All right. Now let me give you another example. All right. I'm sitting here at the church with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Church is a hospital. So I might be one that comes from the streets. Amen. But Jesus Christ loves me. Yes. Jesus Christ did not stop loving a person just because they were Jews. But he said, I didn't come for those that think they're saved. Yes. Because even the saved ones are not really saved. Yes. They just say they are. Yes. They act holy and sanctified at church. And then they turn around and become somebody else the moment that they stepped out of God's house. Yes. And some people... They don't even wait till they leave the church grounds. But they yes. start shenanigans the moment that they walk out the church. Mm -hmm. Some of them are shenanigans right inside the church. Y'all wonder church. why people sit in the back back there? Because the people that's in the back, aside from the ushers, the people that are supposed to guard the house of God, nobody should be back there in the back. No. Everybody should be sitting as close as possible because distraction is all over the church. Yes. Oh, don't you think the enemy doesn't know God in the word? Okay. He was created by God. So yes. he also knows the enemy. And yes. the enemy knows him well. Yes. He knows the word and he'll come and say. 
God really didn't say we couldn't mix around, did he? I mean, we got the money. Look at you. You got a black sweater. I got a nice black dress. I didn't see no ring on your finger. This is how deception comes. Because I may think that I'm dealing with my brother and sister in Christ, but I really don't, really am not sure if it's not the snake that got two legs. Uh -oh. And we're going to go to part two this week. Because we're talking about the snakes that got two legs, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are the things that happen to us. So we have to be careful because he said, I want you to be careful for those that claim they are your brothers and sisters. Now, do people come from the church? We are supposed to accept everybody. We're not supposed to bring no judgment to anybody. Amen. But be careful because if you're not mature, we talked about this last week. If you don't have the spiritual maturity to tell them, I love you with the love of Jesus. Bless you, brother. God bless you. Thank you for coming in. We appreciate you coming here. Not... I really love, I really, I really love you. Come on, let me, let me, let me. Ooh, his skin's yes, kind of yes. soft there. Ooh, he's got, let <laughs> see my ring on his face. Maybe we can go have lunch oh, no, there. No, no, no. So do you see the kind of shenanigans? Look, it makes you even feel flattered that somebody can look at you in that way and may say, this and that. Mm -hmm. But people come from all walks of life out there in the streets, yes, yes, out there in the world. Because guess what? We were also there. Yeah. But when you are spiritually mature, you can look at the person and say, I see the snake that lives in you. Mm -hmm. And I demand respect. Yes. You will honor me. You will respect that me means. so that we can have that type of relationship That's at it. church. That's it. Because if this woman, come on, this woman was a woman in the church too. Yes, come on. She come learned. On. She was right in the same church. Yes, That's come why on. Paul was like, wait a minute, I heard this. It has been brought to my attention. You guys are not supposed to be pacifying this demon. And if you go and read another version, you know what it tells them to do? Kick him out of the church. You know why? Because he's not going to go just through the mama. But he might try to go through the Amy, through the sister, to the cut. You guys ever met people that just run through the whole entire the whole family? Mm -hmm. You look at them and say, well, girl, I thought she was married to my cousin. Oh, she died. Well, now you with my sister? What is this? Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful with that. Because watch this. My daughter taught me a lot about these kind of things. And there's a few rules that you have to have even while you're out there in the streets. Mm -hmm. And one of the rules is don't get involved with married people. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're doing out there with anybody doing whatever. Stay away from the married people. Mm -hmm. Because married people is you going, you hitting mm -hmm. below the belt now. Yeah. You cannot get involved with any... Are you married? Oh, let me keep going. Let me Speak the truth. Man. This is what, what Mother and I do when we go out grocery shopping. Look straight ahead, Mother. We're passing up the candy out, all the sweetness. Keep, let's look, That's let's it. Stay focused. All right? They have, a, they have this great saying, and they say that stolen sweets are sweeter. Mm -hmm. yeah. But just because it may be good to your mouth, for a moment, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the adulterous woman, she'll make you feel good and say, Hey, honey, I got some nice sheets. They're silk. And my silk sheets, ooh, they'll feel good on your body. Come on with me, dear. Come on with me. And this is when that statement, stolen sweets, becomes sweeter. Yeah. Because it may become sweet to the flesh, but keep eating sweets and your teeth are going to fall out. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about physical teeth. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the spiritual teeth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's go right to the next. 
Second Corinthians. Uh huh. All right. Six chapter fourteen. All verse. right. Let's keep going. In the GW. Second All right. Corinthians. Uh huh. Six chapter fourteen verse. All right. In Let's keep GW. going. Let's keep and going. Read it. Read. Stop forming inappropriate relationships mm -hmm. with unbelievers. Uh huh. Can right and wrong be partners? Ah. Uh -huh. Can light have anything in common with darkness? Now, the Bible never says for you to not love them. But the Bible says when you, Jesus Christ is our example. He sat with sinners. He sat with them. But Jesus Christ had the spirit of God living in him. And he did not commit any offenses against God. Jesus Christ Never went and said, oh, you sure do look good, girl. Because we know that when we come across people that are unbelievers, we're trying to bring them into the light of God. Yes, we're yes. not trying to sit around and sleep with them. Yes. We're not trying to sit around and see what we can get out of them. Yes. Do you know that it is people out there prowling mm. and they just want to get with someone because they get a monthly check every mm. month? Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's not good. That's good, mother. Yeah. Do you know that many people that are older that are getting the retirements and getting their checks, they got younger people that come and say, Boom, I'll be your young daddy. And you can be my sugar mommy. Mm -hmm. These are the things mm -hmm. that people do. And if you have a spirit of loneliness yeah. sitting on you, you will make all kinds of mistakes. Yeah. That's why you have to be straight, prayed up. That's why you got to go to your leader and say, excuse me, I need prayer because I've been feeling lonely. Yes. I've been feeling depressed for some yes. time. Yes. And I need the church. The Bible says that if you are sick, that loneliness and depression becomes a sickness. Because as we learn in class, that those stresses can turn into physical illnesses, then that depression and loneliness mm -hmm. turns into a root that sits in your heart for so long, mm -hmm. and then you'll allow anybody to manipulate you. My God. Just because they come and say, hey girl, Girl, you look pretty, girl. You looking so beautiful. All I want to do is just take you out. Come oh, on. No, thank you, oh, Mary. Oh, you, you know what? That sure is a pretty wedding ring. Thank you. But you know what? I don't want to be married to you. I just want to be part-time. <laughs> part-time lovers. No. Where are you at, part-time lovers? Because, oh, here's a real good one. Friends with benefits. Oh, oh yes. Lord Jesus. Oh, yeah, we go. Talk about that. Talk about Come that. On. Friends with benefits. With benefits. Careful about having friends with benefits. Mm -hmm. Especially if they say to you, Oh, I don't want no relationship with you, mama. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is just be your little friend. No. I come over to your house in the evening time. Girl, don't you need a rub down? Really? I know you be working all the time. Don't you need somebody to put that little ladder cane patch on your back? What 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 about a few little rub downs? Girl, you look like you hurt. Let me help you. That's the red flag right there. Warning, warning, warning. warning. All right. But there's many people, y'all, that get manipulated because they may not be right here at King's Land with us. They may not be right here part of our group. They may be out there and they don't have nobody to teach them these things. That's why we are sounding the trumpet to yes. anybody that is old or young. Yes. Because there's a lot of young people that are getting manipulated out there. Yes. These guys are running through these young girls. They're going from house to house. Oh, don't let them live in the projects. Because... They'll be having two children with you up here because you live in the front of the projects. And then they'll go all the way to the back of the projects. And then they'll have two kids from another older woman that's keeping it hush-hush. Because she's lonely. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all she wants is a little part-time love. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's keep going here. Now, 
Point number two. We need to set boundaries in church with our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And we also need to set boundaries because we are the church with other people. Mm -hmm. All right, the Lord has spoken to me. I can no longer get into no freaking frack situation with yes. you anymore. Yes. I know we did X, Y, and Z, but now God is changing me. Mm -hmm. I can no longer do X, Y, and Z with you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you got your bed and I got mine. We can't be freaking and fracking in the midnight hour. Mm -hmm. And you know, if my leg hurt, all I need is a laticane patch. I don't need you trying to rub me down and make me feel good. <laughs> yes, and then you go yes. roll up my leg. Teach my leg. <laughs> oh, glory to your name. All right, so let's go under here and see, because we got some good scriptures under here as well. Ooh, Set boundaries. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6 first. Ooh. Stay in the GW. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Verses 32. And, and 32. don't worry, we got a chalkboard coming up soon where mother will be able to write all the scriptures and that way you guys will be able to to get the scriptures right from the chalkboard. Yeah, yeah, coming up. Yeah, yeah. Is coming up. I am saving the money right now to get a nice chalkboard because this is the chalkboard that is going to lay out. It's going to like a stand so we can be able to put it up when we don't have service. But it's going to be really good. It's going to really bless us. Yes. Proverbs chapter 6. And we go into verse number 32 to 34. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32 to 34. Proverbs 6, 32 to 34. And we're going down to verse 32 to 34. Yes. Take your time, take your time. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Oh, Come on, Elder Sassy. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Young young. Amen. <laughs> Whoever commits adultery uh -huh. with a woman yes. has no sense. Has no sense. <laughs> Did y'all hear? No sense. Mm -hmm. Whoever does this destroys himself. Yes. An adulterous man will find disease and dishonor. Mm. And his disgrace will not be blotted out. Yes. Because jealousy arouses a husband's fury. Yes. The husband will show will show no mercy. No mercy. Yes. When he, when when he, he takes revenge. revenge. Alright now, let's talk a little bit about adultery. Mm -hmm. Adultery is you having sex with somebody that's married. Mm -hmm. So therefore, Remember, marriage, close your eyes, keep looking straight. Mm -hmm. I don't care how beautiful she is. I don't care how sexy she looks. I don't care how fine he looks. I don't care if he got a six pack or a 12 pack, an eight pack, a 24 pack, mm -hmm. whatever pack he got, he's her pack, not yours. Not yours. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you must learn to leave married people alone. Yes, that's good. That's good. I have some people that I know that are dealing with this. That's why they don't want to come to church. Because they know that they are out of order for sleeping with a married person. And so when we sleep, watch what happens. I love this part right here. And this is why as a woman and a man being married is hands off. Because do you see what the man does? The man's jealousy arouses. Because jealousy arouses in the husbands. Mm -hmm. And he gets furious. The husband will show no mercy. Which means it's by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. You slept with my wife. Where are you at, David? Because uh, if Uriah the Hittite knew. If that Uriah the Hittite knew. That you were freaking and fracking with his wife. That man would have came and killed David while he was sleeping. Yeah. But God allowed this to happen because God knew that the offense that David committed, he repented for it. He asked God to forgive him so you too can be forgiven. 
If you slept with a married man or slept with a married woman, you can be forgiven, but you got to turn away from that sin. Amen. You got to repent. That's what repentance means. Yes, so right. repentance does not mean go right back around to keep doing the same thing, but you turn away. Yes. 180 degree turn, turn away from that sin. Yes. Hands off that married person, because if you don't, you will end up like David. Because Bathsheba was pregnant by him. And David did his very best to try to take that man and take him back home because he wanted to deceive that man and say, oh, Bathsheba's pregnant from you. But that man just said, I will not leave the war. My soldier, my partners are here. So I'm not going to leave the war. So David had no other choice is what he thought. Because he knew the consequences. Oh, David was a smart man. He wasn't no dummy. He knew that there were severe consequences. And guess what? At the end of that story, let me tell you what happened. That baby that she was pregnant with, that baby died. God did not let that baby live. So you got to be careful because Mary, the man, he don't play about his wife. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love when I talk to my dad about a situation. And he said to me, you can do many things to me. If you offend me, if you mistreat me, if you do whatever shenanigans to me, okay, I got to deal with it. Because I'm a man of God. I'm going to go to my secret place and pray. But if you dare... Touch my wife. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut your tongue out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you touch my wife, I'm going in on you. Mm -hmm. Because men don't play mm -hmm. about their wives. Mm -hmm. You cannot look at a man's wife and look at her in sideways and think that the husband is asleep. Because he's not asleep. Mm -hmm. He's watching his every move. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a level of trust to build in a relationship? Absolutely. Yes. Because when the wife gets offended, the husband is not to say, what, you wanted it or something? Did you did you turn around and back it up? Did you stick it out for him? That is out of order, husbands. Yes. You do not blame your wife for things like this. But what you ought to do is go and say, come here, baby, because I know that Negro hurt you. And I wasn't right yes. there to defend and protect you. Forgive me, but I'm here now. Yes. Back up off my wife, nigga. That is when yes. men go off. And it says the husband will show no mercy yes. when he takes revenge. Mm -hmm. And do you see what God says? Because the revenge is supposed to be from God. Yes. But it looked like God gave a contingency yes. here. Uh -huh. Which means, uh -huh. he said, uh, except for a married folk. Because if you mess with a married woman and the husband find out about it, he's coming after you. He's coming to get you. All right? This is why we're setting boundaries. When you hug a married man, hug him with the love of Jesus. Yes, yes. When you hug a married woman, because there is pastors that are pastors to women. And women yes. are comfortable on coming to talk to Pastor Gary. Yes. But I love the way that my dad talked this to me. He said, most of the time, the first ladies know the reason why they're so jealous. Because they're not backing it up like a dog. Oh, come on. They're not come doing on. what they're supposed to do at home. On, so the therefore, truth. that opens up the gate yes, of, of shenanigizing, jealousy. To the woman and say, mm hmm. Oh, uh, yes, what do you need with Pastor? <laughs> okay, well, I don't want to talk to you. I like to talk to Pastor. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to my pastor. I am a young woman of God, and just because I'm beautiful does not mean I want your man. Mm -hmm. I may need him to give me advice on what I'm doing, and I'm dealing with a niggling over here. Yes, yes, yes. I might yes. be dealing with a, some kind of Niger over here in my situation, yes. and I know that my pastor can help me yes. and guide me good. That's good. That's so good. as a wife, wives, 
Be secure in your position. Because if you're beep, 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 he won't turn around and look at another yes, woman for nothing. Yes, Amen. Yes, that's good. That's good. Come on. Glory to your name. Let's go to the next one, mm -hmm. which is in the book of Acts. Of the Apostles. Yes. Acts of the Apostles. And we're going to the NLT version on this one, everybody. Right, we're kind of skipping around the word of the different versions today. Yes. God is a good God. Acts chapter 17. 26 verse. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Mm. This is so good, y'all. This is... Oh, you talking about biblical meats and vegetables. If you ain't getting your, your, your spiritual food in. And what's the... What is it? 26? Uh, 17, chapter 26, verse. Let's read it. Let's start at verse 24, Pastor. And let's go from 24 to 26, sir. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, and we're going to start at verse 24 and uh, go down to verse 26. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 17, and we're going to go to verse number 24 to 26. All right. All right, let me read. He is the God who made the world. Uh huh. And everything in it. Yes. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth. Uh huh. He doesn't live in man made temples. Yes. And human hands can't serve his needs, for he has no needs. He he himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. Verse 26. From one man he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. Uh -huh. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall and he determined their boundaries all right do you all see the importance of setting boundaries here because see it's god that created everything god made the world and everything in it that means he made you to say mm -hmm. stay right there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and women and men, don't put yourself in a, a, comprom in a, in a compromising position mm -hmm. that will make you, because this woman, she put herself in a, a compromising position. Mm -hmm. Because for this woman not to love her daughter enough to say, boy, is you crazy or is you just plain stupid? Mm -hmm. You think I'm going to sleep with you and you are married to my daughter? Absolutely no. not. No. Pastor! Mm -hmm. Pastor, no, I got no. something to say. Mm -hmm. Pastor, him trying to mess with me. Mm -hmm. You better be like that little boy, that little girl. Do you know that most um, sexual predators and um, sexual acts that people do, such as committing rape and molestation to people, the first thing they do is they come to try to compromise with them and then they put them to a place where you better not never tell your mama because I'm going to hurt her I'm going to kill them, I'm going to do this I'm going to do that and they bring fear in you so that you won't tell nothing especially yes, if you're yes. a little child yes. and that Niger is a grown person mm. that's why you have to be careful and watch everything yeah, around yes, you. Yes. Amen. Everything around you. Mm. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Be careful too about even the person that you're married 
and they don't honor God. My God. Because my God. they may be trying to rape and molest your daughter. Mm -hmm. Be careful with the man or the woman that you are involved in and you already got babies. Watch them. Mm -hmm. If they don't love God and they're not God fearing, they will try to sleep with your little daughter. Because mm -hmm. your little daughter starts growing up and they start developing pretty bodies. Yes, yeah. yes. And they look and then they get mad with you. Oh, don't let them do be like involved with any drugs or things that like will make them pass out, such as pills. Mm -hmm. They'll try to go into the next room and molest them and rape them. Mm -hmm. Then years later, they'll feel comfortable of coming to them because they done got involved with them. Mm -hmm. They say, yeah, you know when you was a little girl? I'm sorry I did it, but I went in there start messing with you. Right behind your mama's back while your mama was in there sleeping. That is rape. That is not consensual sex. And that needs to be dealt with. Because yes. many women are blind. Yes. I bind the spirit of blindness out of the mothers that blind their eyes and say, You probably funny. <laughs> yeah. You was walking around with your cute little bathing suit on all up in my man's grill. Instead yeah. of checking the night chair, and saying, you better get away from us before we do something bad to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. These are the things that happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel deliverance in here. Mm -hmm. Glory, to mm -hmm. Glory to your precious name, Lord, for the deliverance that is sitting in this house. Yes, Deliver yes, your yes. people, Deliver, God. Deliver right now. Yes, yes. yes. All right, now we're going into this last part, and then I think after this part, we may have to go into part two. It's okay, because little by little, okay? And uh, let, me, let me read this part right here, because I want to kind of lay it out, and then I want you to read the scripture, Pastor, which will be Genesis 35. God, God, God was talking to me even this morning. I was so excited about this lesson. I was just like, ooh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Lord, you're teaching us. God is teaching us so good here, children. All right? We're going to go to somebody that really didn't set no boundaries, okay? So go ahead on and get the scripture. Give them the scripture, Pastor, on Genesis uh, 35. So that that way they can go ahead on and go to the scripture. And then I'm going to kind of lay out what we're about to get ready to get into. Go with me to Genesis 35, verses 21 and 22 in the NLT. All right. Now, let's find out something. We're going to talk about, oh, story time. <laughs> Reuben was the eldest son of Jacob and Leah. Reuben was a father to four sons, Hannah, Palu, Hezron, and Camry. No, Carmi. Reuben played a significant role in saving his brother Joseph mm -hmm. from the rest of his brothers who had planned to kill him. Because Joseph was a dreamer and also Jacob's favorite child. Mm -hmm. So they got jealous because Jacob, I mean because Joseph was a young man that had dreams. And these dreams that he was having were really strong dreams. And that mm -hmm. and, and, and the Bible says that Joseph became over all of them. And it was a dream that he had. And the brothers got very jealous and said, Who you're gonna run me? No, you ain't you little run. And so they all wanted to kill him. But Reuben said, No, we're not gonna kill him. We're not gonna do that. Okay? So of course, it all played a good part for them. Okay, so now let's go to Genesis 35 and 21 and 22 first, Pastor, because we're going to find out something that Reuben did. Everybody there? All right. Then Jacob traveled and camped beyond. Traveled on? Traveled on and camped. Beyond 
Meat, meat, you know? Meat dog? Meat, meat dog. Eater. Eater. Mm -hmm. While he was living there, Reuben had intercourse with Bill Hawk. Bill Hawk. Okay. His father's concubine. And Jacob soon heard about it. Mm -hmm. These are the names of the twelve sons of Jacob. All right. The only reason why we put that very part, but we're going to focus on the first part. Hold up a minute, mother. This happened in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Yeah. Yes. So Reuben is the oldest child that Jacob has. Jacob has two wives and two concubines, or two of his maids, her, their maid servants. Okay. So remember, back in those times. Anytime you got married to the wife, she had a little helper, okay? And her little helper was ended up to be Jacob's concubine because they would give their... Remember, back in those times, the family was taught to be, like, super rich with the multitude of children that they had. So the more kids they had, the better it was for them. So during this time, Jacob... Bilhah was Leah, which is the oldest child that he married. Because remember, he wanted Rachel, but he couldn't get Rachel. He, he had to get the first child first, which was the oldest daughter named Leah. And then Leah ended up having Bilhah as her servant. And so Leah had sex with Jacob and had so many kids. And then Leah gave the Bilhah to Jacob. So they can have more kids. Now, the reason why God allowed the uh, young man, old man, don't get sidetracked, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you the first thing you gotta have is yes. you gotta have the bag. You gotta have that yeah. money. Because you can't have no three, four, five, six women and you say, oh yeah, they're just my girls. No, well, you gotta have the money to take care of these women. And that's why God allowed this back then. Because men had integrity back then. They don't have the integrity now. Mm -hmm. Men are all over the place. They don't even want to take care of the woman that they have, mm -hmm. let alone to take care of uh, uh, maybe another woman that could be their servant or could be helping them. Mm -hmm. To what? To remember, because the Bible said, I need you to mm -hmm. make the world with more of my kind of people, mm -hmm. which is God-fearing individuals. People that love. Hey, wake up. Next one gonna be something on you. Now, this is very important for you guys to know because Reuben slept with his daddy's woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Reuben was one that slept with his daddy's woman. And because he slept with her, his daddy was like, hold up, you little Niger. You can't get it to your daddy, man. No, no. Now, you want you a woman? All you had to do was ask me. It's a whole bunch of them out there for you, and I would have said. Because the Bible says that I, Abraham sent a servant to go get Isaac a wife. And then the Bible said that Isaac blessed Jacob to go and go find him also a wife in the same land where Isaac's wife, where Rebecca came from, Rachel and Leah came from that same place many years later on down the line, through the family line. Yeah. So therefore, if you want you a woman, all you got to do is talk to daddy. Daddy going to find you a nice girl. Yeah. And she going to be a God-fearing young lady so that she can love you and you can have a bunch of babies with her. But we gotta have boundaries because the boundaries are uh, in my purse, baby. I apologize, I didn't bring it. It's in my purse, though. You can go back there and get it. I'm gonna try my best not to move. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, yes, don't move, don't move. Don't move. So, hallelujah with this because I want you all to know, and we're gonna get, we're almost done. We got just a few minutes. We think we started at 1205. We got five minutes. All right. So, let's go into this small part here. 
uh, Pastor. Let's go to Genesis chapter 49 because we need to know, did Reuben get away with this? What happened to Reuben for what he did by sleeping with his daddy's woman? And those of you all that think that you can go and sleep with one girl at the church and then go run to another girl at the church, Genesis chapter 49. Genesis 49. Let's go to the CSB version on this one, everybody. Genesis 49. Genesis chapter 49. Got it? All right. Whoa. <laughs> yes. Come on, Elder Sassy. <laughs> Reuben, yeah. you are my firstborn. Uh huh. My strength. Yes. And the first fruit. Of my virility, excelling in power, promises, promises, excelling in power. Uh huh. Just to confirm, you want to cover off this Tur turbulent, turbulent as water. You will not excel because you got into your father's bed. And you defiled it. Mm. He got into my bed. All right. Mm. So really quickly, let's find out. Go and pull up the word virility, and I'll go pull up the word prominence. Gotcha. We can have good understanding. Because mm -hmm. in other words, you know what he said? Hands off, boy. I got boundaries, and my boundaries is you can't touch none of my women. So men and women at the church, if you are already in a relationship with somebody, you can't go and go mess around with somebody else at that same very church. Because all you're doing is causing a bunch of havoc. And you're causing trouble for yourself and for the people that's at the church speak right the with truth, you. Speak the truth. Speak I mean, the truth. you can't have a neighbor that you say you love and you look out for your neighbor, but in the midnight hour while she's <laughs> gone to work, you're going next door and you're getting in her bed with her man. Because mm -hmm. it's happening all over the world. It's happening. So the word uh, promise and, vir and virility. Uh, this means it's got several different ones, but I want to get to you. Okay, the state or quality of being for real. Mainly character, vigor, or spirit. Masculinity. Masculinity. Mm -hmm. The power of procreation. All right. So he told them, you're masculine. You are a man. But you took your man parts and put them in my bed. Instead of going to go find your own bed and taking your man parts to another bed. Now this word, prominence, is a noun. It, which is a person, place, or thing. So we know it's a thing. It's the state of being important or famous. So he thought he was so famous because he said excelling in being famous. So that means, Reuben, you did a lot of great things. Reuben, you were the guy that really blessed me because you brought my son back. You didn't allow the brothers to kill him. Because many years down the line, if you go into the story, you'll find out that Joseph was the man that was next to the man. He became the second highest in the land of Egypt. And so therefore, Joseph became somebody so important that fed them while they had no food. They had to come from a whole nother place to come and eat, get grain to eat because they had seven years of, uh, what do you guys call it here now? It's not, back then it was called famine. Now it's called, uh, uh, but no, it's something with, uh, with the economy. It's something that's going on with the economy. So anyway, it's lack. It's missing. God will give me the word later. But this is the important factor that I want everybody to remain as we go out. Because as we go out, I'm, mother got to go late. She got her hands today. So as we go out, 
we're going to first lay hands, first of all, or being protected. That we are not trying to get nobody else's man or nobody else's woman. Your woman is yours. Uh, their woman is theirs. And if you're involved, that's why we must pray at all times for the spirit of depression yes. and the spirit of loneliness. Because it's going to be many people that come here and they may say, Ooh, mother, you're so beautiful, girl. Ooh, I just like looking at you, mother. And protection must be important mm -hmm. because mother is a sweet individual. Mm -hmm. I love everybody. But let me tell you, I'm covered right here. Mm -hmm. And the, nothing can come my way. And until God blesses with my husband to be physically and tangibly here, then... I need all of you guys to keep me in prayer. Amen. That every individual that comes before me is people that got a sincere heart that really want mother, mother's prayer. Amen. Mother's, and also for people, this is why I don't do well with disrespect. I don't do well with people not honoring me. Because when you honor me, you show me that you will never defile me in any kind of way or undress me with your eyes. Amen. Amen. It shows Amen. honor and respect to me when you treat me as your spiritual mother or as your prophetess that you will never get carried away and do anything. Because mother, I stand in the presence of God yes. and I don't do any foolery. Yes, yes. I have never been a woman that's running around with different men. When I was married, I was married. Yes. When God sealed that assignment, it was over. I became, and I'm still the same woman today, waiting patiently on my husband to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Mama, Mama Tim said that word is recession. Recession. Thank you. Come on, T. Come on, Prophet Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Prophet. That's so it. I'm gonna walk around exactly and it. I'm gonna yeah. lay hands on everybody to for the spirit of protection mm -hmm. to cover them, Lord. For the spirit of integrity, which means doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Yes. And for everyone in this house to honor me as their spiritual mother, honor me as their pastor. We speak the continuous healing virtue. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as she rises up to be the next elder of God, mm -hmm. that you continue to teach her, Father. For the spirit of obedience, Lord God, to never leave her, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I speak healing right here, Father. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. I speak of supernatural protection over here. For Mother Jordan to always, or Mother Charles, to be respected as the woman of God that she is. Hallelujah. And that nobody disrespects her or looks at her anyway. I cover her with the precious blood of the Lamb. That as you love her, Father, that you will always protect her, Father. And that as my right hand yes. woman that she is over here, yes. that she'll always stay in prayer. And bind every Niger that doesn't mean me any good. Yes. Hey, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I continue to speak a spirit of protection here for our first lady. That she is honored and respected and loved as the first lady of Freedom Street and Kingslands Ministries. I continue to speak a double hedge of protection and a double hedge of of obedience yes. and also for him to be vigilant yes. and always keep an eye on all three of his women. Yes. He got his wife, he got his mama, and he got his mama. <laughs> Blessed yes. with a double portion of motherhood. Yes. And that he keeps an eye on the women of the church that as yes. more men come over here, that he teaches them how to be respectful and how to honor God by honoring the women of the house. Amen. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for this wonderful lesson. I thank you for this beautiful prayer. I thank you, Lord God, for everything you're doing. I bless you, Father. I thank you, and as we close out, Father God, we bless you, Lord, that in this house, no devil will be able to stand because we're going to stop them at the door and we're going to rebuke them and cast them out of here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind any sin.
sexual yes. uh, uh, immorality. Yes. We bind any homosexual spirits. Yes. We cast them to the abyss right and, and we send them out. out. In the yes. mighty name yes. of the yes. name yes. of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. We yes. thank you, Lord, yes. that each and every person here loves and respect each other, yes. that we honor each other, yes. and that we set boundaries with each other. Yes. yes. We also speak a special prayer over my grandson, Lord, yes. that you protect and watch over him, Father. Yes. That the eyes of lust yes. that is sitting in him, we yes. cast them out to the yes, abyss Lord. in the name of the Lord Jesus yes, Christ. God. That may he never get involved in any foolishness, yes, Father, yes. as he is on a road to go and be living his best life yes. as a great baseball player from yes. God. We also pray over our man of God, Brother Roy, that is on yes. the phone with us, Lord, that you continue to teach him, that you continue to guide him. Yes. And Lord, as you said to me, and I thank you for delivering this to me, Father. Yes. He is forgiven, Father. Yes. Yes. His slate has been wiped clean, Father. Yes. And we hold no ill will. I hold no ill will yes, on him, God. Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that he is loved by you and that he is loved by each and every one of us, Lord. Continue to bring healing upon him, healing in his body, healing in his spirit, healing in his mind. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak healing for all of our spiritual children out there, our covenant partners, our people of God, and even those of you all that are just coming in or you may run across this video. If you see and if you hear anything in this live stream that has concerned you in any way, please send us a message. We are ready and willing to hear from you yes. so that we can pray over you, your children, your family, so that this enemy will not get close to you and your beautiful children, Lord. This has been our noble platform on today. We are friends of God and we are servants of the Most High God. And we thank you, Father. And we bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Until next time. And let Pastor also have final words. He would like to have final words. I just want to say to you all, don't be afraid if you've got something on you. Yes. And you need to be delivered. Yes. I pray that the establishment of church that you go to is teaching the truth. Word of God. Yes. Raw, as we say, and uncut. Yes. You must be ready and Yes. So until next time, we'll see you. This is our noble platform. Peace and God bless.